CIPD accredited course and CIPD qualification. What's the difference? Now, a lot of people may think that a CIPD qualification and accreditation is something that's used interchangeably because trust me, that's what I thought. I don't know if I was just being stupid, but when I was studying, I thought qualification and accreditation meant the same thing. But actually, there are some differences to the meanings of these. Now, if you are starting out in HR and you've never heard of the CIPD before, I recommend that you pause this video and go to my CIPD resources playlist where I go over what the CIPD profession map is, who the CIPD are in a little bit more detail, core knowledge factors, core behaviours, core values and a tour of the CIPD website from a student perspective. So go and check that video out and then come right back to this one. But in this video, I'm just going to clear up the differences between CIPD accreditation and qualification and what's the best route to take when thinking about completing some kind of CIPD qualification. So if you're interested in finding out more, then keep watching this video. So briefly, I'm just going to go over who the CIPD are. So the CIPD stands for Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development. CIPD are helping professionals to advance within their careers to get more of an understanding of the different trends and changes and patterns that are happening in our world on a daily basis so that we are well equipped to do our roles in human resources. So what is a CIPD qualification? CIPD qualifications are recognised by employers of a standard of excellence. This is a qualification that if you obtain it, employers are going to see that you really care to advance your knowledge in understanding human resources, to put it into place when it comes to the workplace and be someone who's part of a, being a change maker, someone who is who has different insights, who's looking at things from different evidence based practices, who's trying to understand different principles that we need to be going by in order to ensure that we are working to our best capabilities. So the CIPD is really recognised as being that kind of qualification. Now, the actual CIPD qualification that you would obtain when doing a course that has been designed specifically by the CIPD is aligned to the profession map. So the CIPD profession map is another video that I've done. So please go and check that one out to understand what the CIPD profession map is, because this is what the whole qualification is based around and it is done solely by the CIPD. The CIPD put these qualifications together. So there are five different qualifications that you will have an option of taking dependent on where you are in your career journey currently. So let me just look at my laptop so I can fully tell you exactly what these five different qualifications are because I don't want to get anything wrong. So we've got the foundational certificate in people practice, the associate diploma in people management, the associate diploma in organisational learning and development, advanced diploma in strategic people management, and finally, the advanced diploma in strategic learning and development. So which one should you go for? Now, there is a general rule of thumb around trying to understand which qualification is right for you, but you do not have to stick to this because I'm an example. I didn't go into HR and do the foundation level. I actually just went straight to the top and did level seven, but I'll get into that. So usually if you are just starting in HR, let's say you've got no HR experience. Let's say that you finished your A-levels. You haven't even really thought about going to university, for example, and you want to understand the foundations of people practice, then taking the foundational level course may be right for you. Or let's say you are just maybe a business partner, maybe you've just taken on a junior business partner role or you're a HR advisor, you're an assistant, you're a generalist. You want to get more of a feel and understanding of the actual practices within HR. Then taking the associate um, qualification may be better for you. Or let's say you are a senior leader. You are very senior in your organisation and you want to really understand the strategic elements of people management and how that's going to link into the work you're doing. How can you become more of that change agent? Then doing the advanced diploma would probably be right for you. So these qualifications are awarded by external study centres. But these qualifications, as I mentioned before, are built 
by the CIPD. Once you complete these qualifications, then you will have the opportunity to get your CIPD qualification and you can become either a foundation member level or an associate member level with the chance to go up to chartered member level dependent on experience. So next up is what is a CIPD accreditation? Now I mentioned that the qualification is created by the CIPD, that professional body. A CIPD accredited course is created by the university, usually a higher level education provider. And in order for them to get the accreditation status, they need to meet high professional standards that the CIPD have set in order for them to say that their human resource management course is an accredited course by the CIPD. So there are HR courses out there that are not accredited by the CIPD because they do not follow the high standard that the CIPD have set. So these courses are designed with the profession map in mind. They are mapped to the profession map so the universities will create the course and in the universities you've got different types of modules in different universities so really in that sense it really depends on what type of modules what focuses do you want to go for do you want to go for a degree where it's more exam focused and less coursework or more coursework and less exam but still i would say should be accredited by the cipd if you are trying to follow those types of standards and you want to be somebody who is a CIPD advocate. So usually when it comes to an accredited course, there are a couple of levels. So you've got the level five, which is a bachelor's degree level. So you can do a human resource management degree as a undergraduate and you can obtain a level five status. A lot of human resource management degrees in the master's level are level seven. So that is where, and that is equivalent, equivalent to the advanced diplomas and the level fives are equivalent to their associate diplomas. So when I mentioned before that it really depends on like your situation, your circumstance, dependent on like what you go for, it really does. Because yes, there is an outline and a general guide of like when you should go for different qualifications, but it really depends on you as an individual and what you want out of your career and where you're heading it's it's really up to you but obviously yes there is guidance so just to give you a brief example from me I did a bachelor's degree in psychology and I wanted to go into HR after doing my psychology degree now I was looking for graduate jobs couldn't find any so I said to myself okay you know can't find any graduate jobs that's fine Personally, I want to understand more about HR anyway, so I'm going to do a master's degree so I can understand more about it. In the process, I can probably get a few internships and get some experience along the way, which is what happened. So yes, I did a level seven with absolute no prior, only an, a module that I did in my psychology degree on HR, and that's it. So no real prior um, experience or knowledge on HR, and I just went and did a level seven master's degree. Now, at the time, I wasn't a senior HR leader or professional but I still went and did the master's degree because I thought I was very capable of doing it because when I did my module in psychology I got a first class so I was like well I feel like I know a thing or two about the basics and the fundamentals so I can go and do the degree as a master's student and I did do that and I got a distinction and I was like wow okay I know a little I know a few things about HR so that then led me to get my opportunities I got my internship and I started at the bottom I didn't start as a HR business partner and I'm now working my way up and now I am a HR business partner so you can if you want to and if it suits you as an individual and your drive and your passion you can do a level seven if you want to do a level seven when you're entry level that's not a problem but a lot of people who potentially may have, because um, if you watch my last video, one of my last videos that said 50% of people, I think it was 50%, but don't quote me, watch the video and you'll see. Um, a large proportion of people, they came from a different specialism into HR. So they've spent most of their career not actually in HR before coming into HR. So for those individuals, it might make sense to do a... Um, and it's, let's say they're senior leader, it might make sense for them to do a level seven because they're at that kind of level 
um, but they want to know more about HR. So it really depends on who you are as an individual, depends on what your ambition is, what your goals are, what do you feel comfortable with in terms of like what you go with. I wouldn't say that, you know, the CRPD qualification and the um, master's degree or the bachelor's um, degree that you do that's accredited, um, one's better than the other. I honestly think it depends on your situation. And I'm going to go into some of the pros and cons of both in a second, just so you can get more of an understanding of what really suits you. So pros of CRPD qualifications, a lot of CRPD qualifications that are done by external providers these days can be done 100% online. So you have the freedom to do these qualifications in your own time. Some of them are quite self-paced. Yes, you've got access to your tutors online and via email, um, but they are self-paced and you can actually do it around your schedule. So this is good because if you've got other commitments, like you might have childcare commitments, you might have um, work commitments, you can tailor your learning experience around that to get and obtain your qualification. There are opportunities to do CRPD qualifications in classroom like settings as well, but a lot of them these days are um, online, so you've got that flexibility, so that would be a pro. So as I would say a con of a CRPD qualification potentially is that you don't get the university experience because these qualifications are done by external providers, usually online. Yes, you can have the classroom setting, but it's not going to be the same like uni experience if that's something that you really want and you want to be in that kind of environment to do your work. You want to be around many people in your lecture halls and your, um, your seminars. It may not potentially be like that, but don't get me wrong, I'm sure there are courses out there that do have that kind of seminar feel um, when it comes to CIPD. I didn't do a CIPD qualification. I did mine at a uni, so I'm not entirely sure. But that might be something that you might need to consider, like what environment do you work in best and what would make more sense to you? So another con could be that because it's most of them are quite like flexible and online and self-paced, you've got to have a self-discipline to get things done. Um, in terms of like having that, accountability like at uni where it's like okay you, you have to do this within a year um there are other like cipd qualifications where you could take you, they can take up to three years for you to complete if you want to and you can just do it at your own pace so it's like you don't have the same pressure i would say as uni um to kind of get things done but if, so if you thrive in that kind of environment where it's hard for you to just get things done and you need more of that support to have things set then uni might make sense for you but it really does depend so the pros of doing the CIPD accredited program is that you are in education full time if that's something that you want to do. Um, yes, there are opportunities to do part time, I'm sure. Um, but majority of the courses are full time. So you've got that whole exposure in a uni environment of doing your human resources degree. I think with the um, human resources degree as well, you've got the opportunity. Um, some courses will tell you that you need to do like an internship in the interim of it um, to gain some valuable experience. So that's a good opportunity for, to get your foot in the door whilst you're actually studying as well full time. You're surrounded by other people um, in a social setting. So as I mentioned before, a lot of the CIPD courses these days you can do online, but within a degree environment, you are around people, you've got your peers around you. Um, there's room for project work, like working in groups on certain aspects. Um, and working out things together in a group setting and getting some of your um, qualification based on working in groups. So there is a lot of different variety when it comes to social settings when you're doing it in a degree format. Um, also, with the university experience, you may focus on different specialist areas that you might not in the CIPD qualification, as the CIPD qualification might be more of a generic sense, whereas within uni, they have specific topics that you can do and you can even pick and choose between certain topics as well in some circumstances that you are more interested in. So you've got more of a specialism or specialities to choose from if you um, have more of a preference in certain areas of HR which you might want to choose. So that is a good option. So if you're not sure on what type of qualification to take, the CIPD on the website actually have a quiz that you can take and the quiz is supposed to help you to understand where you fit in most and like what would be the best path. I'll put the link to the quiz in the description. So if you do want to take that, um, then please go down the prescription and check out the CIPD website. So I just want to go through some of the main differences between the CIPD accreditation and the qualification, just so that you've got a more of a better understanding. And I'm going to show you a grid of these differences now. 
So the qualification is designed and developed by the CIPD. Um, and this is aligned to the profession map, whereas the accredited program is usually developed by the university and it's mapped to the profession map. So the centre name for the qualification is um, the study centre, whereas the centre name for the accredited program would be the accredited program provider. The centre type for the qualification is typically further education colleges and private training providers, whereas for the accredited program, this is usually higher education providers such as universities. For the CIPD qualification, it's marked by the study centre, so it's moderated by the CIPD as well, whereas the uh, accreditation is marked by the university. With the CIPD qualification, it is awarded by the CIPD, but for your accredited programme, you'll get the qualification which is awarded by the university. Once you complete your qualification and it's successful, you will get a CIPD qualification sent to you and you have the option to join the CIPD membership. Whereas in the accredited program, you then will have the option to join the CIPD membership once you have got your um, certificate from the university. Another option is if you're an experienced professional and you want to become a CIPD member, you may be able to do that by taking the experience assessment on the CIPD website. So this will help the CIPD to recognise if um, they think that you are eligible for membership and you can get membership that way. There are also some free open courses on futurelearn.com by the CIPD that you can take as well beforehand if you just want to understand and see what type of content the CIPD provide. But these open courses are on the Future Learn website. I'll put all the information down below in the description box if you want to check any of that out. So that's all from today's video. And if you want to find out a bit more about CIPD resources like the profession map, the website, please check out my CIPD resources playlist and the videos within those because they will give you more of a detailed picture on what it is that the CIPD need and want from us professionals in order for us to follow the specific guidelines that have been mapped out and in turn ensure that we are having a successful career in being change makers, change agents and really focusing on people within our organisation. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.